Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. It's been a while since I made one of these, Um, I think the last vid I made was on Mondays, it's the first time in a long time I've only made like two vids a week, but it's been a busy one for me, and thankfully not too much has happened, we've made a couple of, you know, other small signings, Justin Ellis, uh, Jihad Ward, I believe we just signed a wide receiver slash punt returner from the 49ers as well. Nothing too big regarding Giants Nation. Of course, around the NFL, there's been very big news taking place. And uh, fortunately, I've still been able to do the streams during the week. You know, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we got to cover those things that happened around the NFL, like the Tariq Hill trade and so on and so forth. Regarding the Giants, though, um, this, this is kind of a couple of things I've gathered over the past couple of days. Uh, James Bradbury, Ahmad Sauce Gardner, and the 5th and 7th overall pick for the Giants in 2022. So let's start with James Bradbury a little bit. Everybody knows the deal. Joe Shane wants to clear up $40 million in cap space. Um, he's already cleared around 20 of that 40, so he's halfway there. With the Giants are currently $3 million under the cap, so we are safe for now. And if he wants to clear that other 20, uh, the biggest part or the biggest piece of the puzzle that would lead to that is somehow, some way, moving James Bradbury for a pick to another team. And now it also came out that the Giants are looking for anywhere from a first to a fourth. Now, I don't think we're getting a first. I don't think we're getting a second. I think that we possibly could get a third or a fourth. Um, there's also been a, you know, a little bit of report that came out that said a team offered a fifth, which I definitely would not trade James Bradbury for a fifth. I feel like we need to stop undervaluing our players. Uh, Bradbury is one of the better corners in the NFL, in my opinion, has, you know, he's like a top 10, fringe top 10 corner in the NFL. I don't want to trade him. I would be happy to keep him. In fact, let me talk about that a little bit first. The fact that we're under the cap space right now, I know that we need to clear up a bit more. We actually need to be around like 12 to 12.5 million under because according to spot rack i believe that's how much money it's going to take to sign all of our draft picks if the giants stay where they are and you know they, they pick whoever they pick it's going to take up to up to you know potentially 12.5 million dollars to do that we are not at we don't have 12.5 million dollars in cash space right now so we're definitely going to have to be very very creative in how we do that um but we're under the cap right now Bradbury's been our number one corner for the past two years. He's been a really good number one corner for the past two years. Why not keep him? Like, you know, like I really, really want to keep this guy. But if, and this is where the big if comes in, if Don Wink Martindale deems that he's not a necessity to have on this defense, a defense in which, you know, Wink has admitted it to be very aggressive and that it is very dependent on the cornerback and it position and in general the secondary overall. If he deems that Bradbury is not fit for it, yeah, then then we have to we have to roll with it. You know what I'm saying? We could sit here and talk about how Bradbury is a man corner all day. It's just that, you know, he did well in Patrick Graham's zones defense, but he's been a man corner primarily for the majority of his career. We can talk about that all we want. At the end of the day, the current defensive coordinator of the New York Giants, I feel like, has the most say of whether or not Bradbury should stay. Because if I guarantee you, if if Don Wink Martindale went and told Joe Shane, hey, I don't know why you're shopping this guy, but don't do it. Keep him. He's going to be a mainstay on this defense. Then Joe Shane is not moving Bradbury. He's finding another way to get the job done, to get to his, you know, goal of 40 million. So what it suggests to me is that, you know, Wink probably feels like he could replace him. You know, that's where Sauce Gardner comes in. You know, you re you replace him just like that. One, two, three with the best cornerback in college football right now, you know, with one of our first round picks. Uh, now, the thing is, is that I really do hope that we get just good compensation for Bradbury. I don't want, like, once again, this is a, a potential top 10 guy at his position. I don't want to send that off to a contending team for a fifth round pick. I would really, really hope we could get a third or a fourth somewhere. But it just looks like the trade market isn't there for whatever reason. I'm going to lean and say maybe a draft day trade. Speaking of draft day trades, getting to the fifth and seventh overall picks. Getting to the fact that we're going to need around $12.5 million to sign all of our picks. Uh, the trade down scenario has been offered by Giants fans, beat reporters, just everybody surrounding the Giants alike for, uh, you know, I want to say a month or two now. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is 
Well, because you trade down with your first round pick, you're paying less money to that first round pick that you draft. Um, most of that cap space that we need of the 12.5 million is taken up by the two first round picks alone. You know, they get paid the most money the way these rookie contracts are structured. So if we go from 7th to 15th or even something like 5 to 15th, man, that probably shaves off, I want to say, like 4 million just like that. As crazy as that sounds but that's how much first round picks get paid like we should not be surprised by this so the giants should definitely look into it um for that reason alone now, of course getting back to sauce gardner uh, the not only the replacement for bradbury but somebody that i hope you know has potential to be even greater than that if we're gonna draft a corner in the top 10 overall i can't really think to myself how many corners drafted top 10 overall actually you know lived up to their you know potential the one that comes to mind the most as a bust at least so far in his career has been jeff okuda he was the third overall pick a couple years ago i think that was the 2019 draft or was it the 2020 draft listen and the giants in recent memory have had bad experiences with drafting you know corners in the first round i don't want us to be scared of drafting a corner just because of our previous experiences i've seen people even saying hey don't you get deandre baker vibes from sauce and i'm just like no they're both really confident in their game that's about it like i don't see anything about about sauce that suggests you know off the field activities that may be negative in nature um he just seems somebody that is really confident in his game and the giants seem to like him a lot you know they're doing their due diligence just so it was a matter of a day or two ago they were spotted at a cincinnati restaurant talking <laughs> to a mod sauce gardener uh, Sauce spent the appetizer portion of dinner with the New Orleans Saints, and then he spent the actual main course dinner with the Giants. And uh, that makes sense to me because the Saints pick, what, at like 14th or something like that? They, they pick in the teens. I don't think Sauce is getting to them. I think they should be looking at either Stingley or Andrew Booth or Trent McDuffie if they're looking for a corner. Or, hey, Saints, you want a corner call us up and we'll give you bradbury just swing us a third or fourth round pick man like we'll, we'll get that deal done but they're doing their due diligence with this man and with every single day that passes it just seems more and more likely like sauce is going to be a lock either at five or seven i would prefer it to be seven not only because the lower salary but because i really think we could get a premier tackle at five uh, but Ryan Dunleavy has even come out and said that an NFL source even thinks that Sauce to the Giants is one of the best, quote unquote, you know, player to to what's it called to franchise marriages in this draft. Then, of course, a little something I'll throw in about the tackles that I've kind of missed over the past couple of days is that the Giants were also at, I think it was Mississippi's um, Pro Day, and they seem to love Charles Cross. Uh, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I am also a big fan of Charles Cross. He is somebody that I would take with the fifth overall pick. And I'm glad to see that people are starting to kind of come back around on him. If we do take him, I think he'll be fine at right tackle. He's one of the better, if not the best pass protectors in the class. And some say that the scheme he played at Mississippi State probably isn't suited for somebody to be a right tackle. What I'll say to that is that he's a rookie. He should be able to learn it relatively quickly and that you know, if he is somebody that the Giants deem worthy of a top five pick, you better be able to play both positions, in my opinion. Just like how with Andrew Thomas, when he was picked, he was able to play both positions. Don't forget now, Thomas was actually supposed to play right tackle when the Giants drafted him. It's just that Nate Solder opted out that year. He got thrown into the fire at left tackle, and now he's well on his way to being one of the better left tackles in the entire NFL, let alone the entire NFC East. So we shall see what happens if Cross and Sauce are the picks at five and seven i'm gonna be very happy crisscross applesauce that's it for today guys let me know what you think like share subscribe and i'm out hey guys thanks for watching thank you for checking out my channel the hub here on giants youtube make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video like it share and subscribe and i'm out